We are live. Yes, we are live on a dentist show. It is Sunday, and I'm bringing you another good topic for us to discuss. All of us, I know, in Ghana eat rice. There's omutuo, there's jollof rice, there's wache, there's fried rice, there's enwa rice. Rice, 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 rice. We all eat rice. Yes, that one is a fact. Ghanaians love rice. Um, and so today is an exciting topic. Um, let me get you to see me. Hello. I hope everybody's well. Um, do please um, remind yourself and get to know that it's still COVID, yeah? So hand washing, masks, um, you know, social distancing as much as you can. It's all very important because I hear that um, there's a second wave in Kenya. Um, and we're hoping that it doesn't come to Ghana at all because we are keeping very safe and, you know, doing the right things. Now, um, my topic is that we are talking about rice. Um, and as I was saying before, like Ghanaians, we eat rice like on a regular. And for me, even me, if I don't eat rice, I feel like I'm not full, like in a day. Apart from my body and kotumre, you know, when I eat my body and kotumre, I know I'm set. But apart from that, if I don't have rice in a day, I feel like something is not right. Um, and so we're going to be discussing, um, you know, uh, rice production and development in Ghana. I know Exim Bank has been pushing a lot in terms of um, the rice industry. I know that, you know, by 2025, Ghana wants us to, you know, stop um, importing so much rice from Thailand and, you know, all the other countries that we import from. Um, and today I'm going to be speaking to Richard Anderson um, and and also my brother Trigmatic. Like everybody knows he's a musician, okay? But now, I mean, he messaged me the other day, um, actually he tagged me on Instagram and was like, um, and just launched his, his rice package thing. And I was just so blown away. I was like, oh my God, is this made in Ghana? Like, you know guys, I'm all for made in Ghana. So I got excited um, and he messaged me and he was like, look, Denta, um, I, I want to come and give you a pack of the rice. And I was like, cool, why not? Um, and so I saw him, I think, I think on Friday or Thursday, one of the days. Um, and he brought in the rice. I was at Ghana Tourism Authority. I was like, bro, come. And, you know, he met the CEO of Ghana Tourism. And everybody was just blown away by the packaging. Um, and I'm really excited to say that I've tasted the rice and the rice is on point everybody should be purchasing this rice. Like, you have to go out there. Um, if you're in Ghana, you have to order it. And for me, I just want to speak to my brother right now and his partner and find out, you know, has he stopped music? Is there not going to be any music from Trig? Are we just going to see rice? That's, I mean, there's a lot. And I want to know from him, you know, why he chose rice and not another product. Or is he thinking about another product? Um, agro, you know, agriculture is such a big and vast, um, there's so much opportunities in there. And so if you are watching me on uh, Facebook, make sure you do a watch party, um, you share your page, please share your pages. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe and share your pages as well. Um, let me see, I see a few comments here. Yes, lady says, um, Africa can grow its own rice, 100%. Yes, we can. Um, Richard Addison watching. Yes, Yao, good. I'm so glad you're watching. Yao, make sure that you share your page. Um, amazing. Let's support our brother and his business. That's why I'm here, guys. I'm here for this. I'm here for us to be supporting each other, for us to be just making sure that this Made in Ghana products and the way that we want to see Africa and Ghana we need to be making sure that we are promoting our own and that we are eating our own grown products. We have the fertile land for it. And so there's no excuses why we shouldn't be having um, our own rice and our own vegetables and our own everything right here um, in Ghana. And so without further ado, um, I'm going to get my guys on. I know they're eagerly waiting to come on. Um, so please welcome Trigmatic and Richard. Hi. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Trig. Hi, Richard. Hi. Hi. Hi, Denta. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? 
I'm I'm fine by grace. We're good. It's good to see you. Now, um, I think my first question would be, have you given up on music? <laughs> Not at all. Not okay. at all. Not at all. I mean, currently, as we speak, I just got uh, six nominations at the for the um, Greater Accra Music Awards. And um, yeah, and then also uh, Ghana Arts and Culture Awards uh, for um, overall best, um, um, best artists, artists of like people who do use cultural stuff. So oh, yeah, fantastic. the music is still is still on, and we can't stop. As for the music, yeah, you know, we can't it's stop. number one. It's number one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I'm, I'm really, I'm so, I was so happy to see your product and to see a partnership with your brother, Richard. Um, and for me, I want to find out, you know, how and why you went into rice farming. I think that's the second question. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'll just say that um, all, all thanks to my brother, Richard. Um, he called me one day and said, true. And because I knew that he was doing other things. Then he called me and said, Trig, I want to get into this. And I've tried it and it's working. And I think you should try it. And I wasn't so sure. So he said, OK, how about this? Why don't I give you um, just a few a few plots? You try your hands on it. If you fail, it's OK. If you if you gain, it's fine. Um, and then I tried. It was hectic from, from top. And um, when I did, Chale, nothing really happened. You know, I didn't see anything. You know, and um, you know, I didn't even see up to like harvest. So like, just about almost like giving up. And then he came again. He said, you know, bro, I think we should, um, you know, join hands and and do this and make sure we're doing it together and making it happen. And today we're we're all here. And I give most of the credit to him because it was something I wasn't really looking at when he when he gave me the numbers. I was blown away when he said, you do you know how much money is spent on importation do you know how much can be made from this i was blown away and then i said why don't we give it a try you know so yeah you, you said that it was hectic from start to finish tell me about how you know tell me about the um i mean you know one thing is you need to when you're getting into a new venture you need to have an understanding and it, you know sometimes a lot of people get into a great and thinking oh it's the other business it's it's the other thing that i want to get into but it's a full-time thing it's, it's not it's not something that you do as a substitute you know it's something you you get in and you find yourself going in and in it's something if you're not ready you might just give up at a point i know a lot of farmers um who have, who started and and are no longer doing it because you sometimes you go to the land you're looking at it it doesn't look green as you see it on tv um sometimes uh you know you you just realize that you need to spend money on 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 getting uh, the the plants sprayed well sometimes and then with rice for instance when the beds come in it's crazy because so sometimes you have to go on the field yourself and then make sure you're getting people to either throw stones or scream and that alone is is work and it's capital intensive so if you start and for me I, i'm i'm lucky i started small so i gained some experience because um, i started with just four acres and you know you even with that it was crazy because i'm in a car and you need supervision you need to be there it needs hands on like all the time so these are some of the some of the things and then also the issue with trust especially dealing with farm managers and the issue with land acquisition if you don't get the right place and the right people to deal with and there's another issue with uh, getting machinery you know and then also where to even go getting the right seats you know get and and um being able to pay your your the the the, the agronomists that come on the land to check and all of that so all these things will deter you, but I mean, if, if you know where you're going, and like I said, we're, we're getting into the world where um, collaborations become the new gold mine, you know, so it became necessary that we collaborated, you know, so, and I realized that, I mean, Richard had, had the experience besides him, we have other people on the farm who had some experiences and brought, brought it on board. If it was just me, I don't think I, I would have continued, I must be honest. 
Mm. Yeah, because it was it was tough. Yeah. So when he gave you the four acres, you must have thought, yeah, that's I can do this. I can do yes. this. Yeah. Like you know, you were hyped. Yes. Um, but then you didn't really did he didn't re did Richard ever tell you how intensive it was? Did you? Uh, no. <laughs> I like I like I like you. <laughs> he didn't tell me. He didn't, he tell, didn't you. tell me. He didn't tell me. He just, oh, you'll try it. And you know, I, I went there to see what he had done. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And then he said, oh, but then I, I'm just giving you a small portion. I said, oh, yeah, I can do it. I mean, it's just small, you know. But he didn't tell me that all these things followed. And yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. Let me speak to, let me speak to Richard. Let me speak to Richard. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So how long have you been how long have you been farming? Is it just um rice that you do or do you do other things? Uh rice currently. Uh we're looking at doing pepper as well. And the okay. okay, so why did you choose rice? Actually hmm. so it was actually for um it was a, a charity thing I did and I kind mm -hmm. of fell in love with it. So I was basically doing uh, a charity for a village in in the western region, and uh, I think uh, Professor Awono's son actually wanted some rice. So I went there and I, I saw this whole you know rice fields. It was nice. So I was like, okay, let's try it. So we did a, a community rice farm, and the proceeds were used to build a teachers' quarters. And after that, I asked the chief for some land, and then he gave me the land. And I started the rice. Wow! And how many acres did you start with? Oh, that's a different story. So I went in big. I went in uh, 30 acres, I think. Yeah, Whoa. 30 acres. 30 I, I, acres? I, I, I lost everything. You lost everything? <laughs> everything. <laughs> everything. Wait, wait, wait. Why did you lose everything? What happened? So, you know, I was fresh out of... Um, I just I had just come back from London and, you know, I had some money. So oh, I God. Oh, God. Bugger had landed. You know, yeah, see? <laughs> and, and and I thought it was so easy. So I went there, I pumped in money, and, and these villagers would come and tell me, oh, you have to do this, yeah. And I did all of that. And I basically was sitting in my office thinking, oh, I have a rice farm. Harvest time comes, birds have eaten everything. So <gasps> not even a grain. You are joking. Not a grain. <laughs> and how much investment did you put into that? 30 acres. The 30 acres, I think, it's around 80, 80 something thousand cities. Wow. And, but was, was there anybody managing the farm for you? Or did you just yeah. think? Well, there were people managing the farm for me, but I didn't know anything about rice. And I just went in blind, really. It's like going on a blind date, really. You don't know what you're going to get. Mm. So. Um, so after you lost everything, did you, I mean, why didn't you call it quits? Why did you go back? Why did you start again? I don't, I don't quit. And when I start things, I need to finish them. So I was like, you know what, let me go back to university. So I went to University of Google and I learned a lot about rice and I went back again. No, <laughs> Kobe. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then you went to university and started to learn about rice. No, I think they, I went on Google, not proper university, but okay. Google. Oh, you went Google searching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> university of Google, I understand now, I understand now. Yeah. So then you started reading about rice, how to, and then started watching videos and started, you videos know, reading and, you know, articles. Yeah. Of course. And uh, so we tried again, and I think, well, how much, we got about 30 bags, right? 30 bags. Yeah, we got about 30 bags of rice. Which was quite impressive. I was quite happy about it. Okay. So then the second time you started, how many acres did you get? Did you go back to the 30? Did you, what did you do? No, I went back to the 30. We did okay. that. And then unfortunately for me, there was a flood. So oh. uh, same thing happened again. But at least we got 30 back. So it was all right. Okay. And, uh, we, we did it again. And we got about 100 and something bags of rice. Okay. And then Ghana happens. So the land was actually sold to a Chinese company who was um, taking clay out for ceramics. So we had to move. Oh, no. Yeah. So fortunately, we got um, uh, 
55 acres somewhere on the top of the road. And then okay. we started that one as well, which is quite good. And now we have about well, almost 2,000 bags of rice. Two. And um, so, you know, with the 30 acres, yeah. um, the first one you got nothing, the second one you got how many? 30. 30. And then it went up to 120, I think. Yeah. And, you, and it went up to 120. How much yeah. are you actually supposed to get with a 30 acre land? Well, with all good farming practices and everything, you're supposed to get 24 bags of paddy. Okay. Yeah, 24 bags of paddy, so multiply that by, uh, by 30. Uh, that would be 24 by 30. So. What are you asking me? Straight. 24 by 30. Menta. 720. Uh, straight, seven, 720. Yeah. Okay, 720. Yeah. So that means it wasn't good. The harvest wasn't good. No, it was terrible. But then, okay, so you've spent all that investment. Because I, I just want people, I want people that are watching to put things in perspective, right? Yeah. And what I like about what you said is that you had to go and learn about it. It's not just about you getting up thinking, I want to do tomato farming. You know, um, I've got the money. Let me just yeah. go and do it. But actually yeah. researching into it, learning about it, and then going to do it and getting people that probably are on the ground that have done it before. Yeah. That's so true. how did you, how did you come back how did you come by your farm managers like somebody to keep an eye on the farm? So I realized that the government had um, uh, a break in um, extension offices and they actually come for free. So you can actually go and get an extension officer to give you you know, all you need, the right seeds, you know, the soil, what you need to do. And they are there. They, they, yeah, they always had additional assemblies, but we don't use them. And we have to use them. Wow. You know, they're getting paid, but we're not, you know, we're not using them. And, and there are lots of agri uh, things like agri engineering, where the government subsidizes agri implements like uh, tractors and planters, you know, sprayers, all that. They are there subsidized by the government. So there is a lot of support from the government, but we just don't know about it, right? Yeah, a lot. And, and I have I have issues with that because I'm, I'm always asking them, why are you not advertising? Why, why are you not telling people they're there? Because um, a, a normal tractor, you'd get around 200, uh, 200 something thousand CDs. You could get it for 180. Wow, really? Yeah. I mean, so they even have, uh, I think they have four whole uh, machines you can actually rent at a very cheaper rate. And and it's not promoted. And and how did you chance buy it? How did you find out? I think um, I wanted to buy a thresher for my rice and someone just pointed me there just out of the blue. I went there and I was amazed. You should go there. It's uh, kind of close to where the Air Force um, golf course is. Okay. I mean, it's in some obscure location. If no one tells oh you where it is, you're not going to find it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so with the plot of land that you have, you, you've got the rice grains. What else do you need when you're setting up a rice farm for those who are interested in, in rice farming? So you need, depending on how big the area is, you need your rice. So whether you're doing broadcasting or you're doing transplanting, uh, you need a power tiller, which is going to turn the soil for you because we do paddy. So normally the, the, the soil is uh, clay and wet. So you can't put a cut on there. You need a parcel. Uh, depending on what you want to do. If you want to do transplanting, then you need a nursery. If you want to do broadcasting, you just throw the seeds in there. Just cover it and then wait. How long do you wait for? Uh, you wait for about two weeks and then you do, you spray with weedy side uh, to kill all the weeds. And the rice will come up. You, you pump water into your field so that you control the weeds. And you just wait till it grows. And when it grows, that's where... How long does it take to grow? It takes... Uh, I mean, the whole process takes four months. Okay, four months. From start to end. From start from to finish. Start to end, yeah. Okay. It takes four months. But I mean, there, there's one difficult bit. Uh, I think I'll let Trick tell you his experience with that. <laughs> he loves that part. <laughs> Trick, tell us that part. <laughs> yeah, I think Richard is talking about the bed scaring part. Where, okay. you know, just when you, you, you feel that it's it's time, you know... You think that this is time for me to the rice, the rice is, is flowering, and that's when the birds come in. And you know the birds come in thousands; they they come in their numbers. 
and they just it's wow. like they sweep down and it's like they're coming to attack you know like when when there's, there's war and people say attack you know the way they come so you now have to <laughs> yeah you now have to because they're no longer scared of the scarecrows they no longer um so now what what can help is using people you actually need human beings to stand on the field and to scream and to throw stones and you pay these people by the hour like you have to pay them Whoa. because yeah because because they're there and they are there from morning to evening just standing there yes, throwing yes. stones throwing and trying stones. to get the birds yes yes and just scaring the birds away because the scarecrows no longer scare them sometimes you come in there on the scarecrows oh my god yeah so and, and oh. birds can eat up everything really birds, yes birds can eat everything the birds can eat everything and these are like very tiny 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 very tiny looking birds so they come in their numbers you know, like, what and I, and I love like a hundred of them at one time just they yeah. decided they, they've, they've had a meeting and said look trigmatics a uh, uh, rice farm is about to be ready let's, let's go and attack <laughs> yeah let's go and attack and you, wow. you should you should you should see us like on the field screaming richard knows how to scream like he screams oh, like that. that's just dodgy what do you mean i know how to scream <laughs> that's just wrong <laughs> So how many people do you have to pay? Like a hundred or fifty people to be screaming and shouting and throwing stones? Well, it, it depends on the size of the land. It depends on the size of the land. I'm, uh, yeah, so with your with your land, with your the size that you have. Uh, yeah, twenty two people paying twenty CDs a day. So you do that for a month. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and you're doing that for a month. For a whole month. Yeah. Now you know why local rice is expensive. That's yeah. That's yeah. It's, it's a very good point. That's why local rice is expensive. Okay. Yes, because that's another thing that I wanted to touch up on, because a lot of people always say, "Look, what's the point of buying uh, made in Ghana products, rice, whatever it is, because it's more expensive than the the." Vietnam ones that comes or the Thailand ones that come and you're saying that is because of some of these things that you have to go through yeah the cost of production is is really high it's like um, you can't compare because one they don't have the issue with the beds um, we do we do um, sometimes sometimes um, now especially now in, in these times where you you can't even tell how the weather is like um, if you if your land is far from water, that's another thing. Um, mm. Luckily, luckily where we are, we have, we have we have irrigation there, so okay. it's, it's 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 not that bad. So when you look at the cost involved, and like Richard was saying, um, government is is assisting, but the visibility is not there. So by the time you know, by the time you before you hear of them, you've already spent. Okay. You know, so okay. so I think they need to probably do more sensitization like do more for people to know that we're we're existing and this is what we do and it, it, these are the functions and people can now go because not too long ago somebody was wanted to buy um, a machine and was asking me and i pointed him there and he was also surprised so it means a lot of people don't know mm, 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 yeah. mm. so then you know after you've got your rice what about the fda process how what's what's that process like <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh dear brilliant it's, it's, they're very helpful they're helpful and they're amazing bunch of amazing people it's just that the tests take too long yeah the tests take take too long but i think it's for our own good um okay. and 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 for, for people out there who are producing i think it's important that they go through that process because they do they do different kinds of tests sometimes they do the test and come back and then you know, give you results and tell you to bring other things and and stuff like that. It, it's it's for our own good because they want to check what we're eating, you know. And uh, I, I think the one that takes the longer one is the pesticide one. Pesticide test and the metal because they, they have to test for metal. Oh, okay, okay. So in the the process of the FDA, how long did it take you? About two months. It takes you two months. It, it takes you about two months okay yeah Too i mean much. that's like the, that's the, like the standard and even with that if you're not lucky and things are detected from the rise you'd have to go back and 
and forth, you know. So, you know, you may have picked up a wrong sample and you need a lot of samples, not just one sample. You need about you need about seven, depending on the sizes, and then you have to add another six. So wow. yeah. And not just the FDA, you have to go to the standards board. Yes. So it goes to the lab and then they, they give feedback to the FDA before you get your certification. Okay, okay. So why did you choose to you to do paddy rice? Because I know there's straight milled rice and there's the barred uh, boiled milled rice. Why did you choose paddy rice? Go Ghana, go Africa, go Africa feed, feed the world. world. <laughs> 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 so, that, so that's the reason why. Yep. <laughs> I mean, we, just wanted to, we just wanted to let people know it can be done. You know, you okay. can actually grow it. You know, you can mill it. You can nurture it. We are very lucky. We have, I mean, with the soil we have in this country, you, you can chuck anything anywhere and it will grow. And we just want people to know that uh, it can be done here. It's not only Thailand. I mean, Nigeria is doing it. Nigeria is buying local rice. And from, I think, October last year, they've been eating rice from Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah. And Honestly, Denta, I'm sure if the, if Ghana gave you 1% of the 1 billion they're using to import rice, you'd do a lot of things with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, definitely. Definitely. So, I mean, how do you think we can combat the price issue? What are Thailand and uh, Vietnam, what are they doing differently that their price is able to be lower than yours? Than Ghana's uh, economies of scale. The more you produce, yeah. the cheaper it becomes. And and and, and also they have um, they have uh, you know laser technology, which is quite expensive as well. So if we can get subsidies on these things, then then yes, of course. And then obviously you have your uh, issue, Ghanaian issue of the land tenure system, where land is very very expensive. Mm. So it becomes. It becomes um, it becomes an issue. So it's a, it's a, it will take a collective effort from the chiefs, the government, and us as well, you know, in order to get this this, this balance. But also, one one thing I like to say is, Ghanaians need to patronize made in Ghana goods because the more you buy, the more money we get. Uh, that's if we don't buy Range Rovers, but we can actually put it back in the in, in the business to buy better equipment to make it cheaper and invest in the business but if you don't buy we don't have the money and then when the technology changes we cannot you know move on with it yeah yeah so, i mean i remember I when you when you were young sorry when you were young things yeah. coming from thailand and china were actually excuse me to say if there are any chinese people here i'm sorry they were rubbish but yeah. because people kept on buying they kept on improving in their technology and what they do now china is giving us virtually everything in the world so mm. if we can support, regardless of what it is, yes, there is stone in the rice. Don't worry, I'm sorry, but you know, try it again. Maybe next time I can buy a machine that will take out the stone Stones, because yeah. of the money you've given me. So yeah. we have to help as well. No, you're right. Because I remember when I posted it on my um, Instagram, there was a comment like that. And I think you did respond to that person, Richard, saying, you know, if you buy our rice, um, we'll be able to you know do like do better each and every time because you're patronizing it and then we get money to be able to you know further um develop things that we need to be able to produce the rice do you get a lot of those comments a lot yeah we do wow yeah i mean yeah you get people <laughs> i think there's so many stories uh um we get a lot of stories that People have been told around um, local produce so much that they've believed it. You know, even with the, the issue of perfume, I don't know who brought that idea of perfume. Like people think that you know they spray some kind of uh, chemical or something. Perfume, like right? Yeah. You know, so people ask you questions like, "Is it perfume? Are you perfume to say, but what wow. people don't know is that every rice smells the same. You mm. know, so." You know that that we've been um, oriented about these things differently, so we need a reorientation. You know, we need to start believing that look, the tomato paste that I buy out there, um, we can grow here and actually have our own. 
um, you know, same with rice, with the rice that I've been eating. Everything has to do with the mind. Because I'm sure, I mean, you go to Nigeria, even if you go to their um, big restaurants, they still serve their local rice, mm. regardless. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and you're right. And I think, you know, you never go to <laughs> uh, Vietnam or Thailand and find Ghana rice there. No, okay. no. Um, so I think that you're right. It's time that we really think about the way in which we patronize things that are made in Ghana um, so that one, the money actually stays in Ghana. In Ghana, yeah. Yes, <laughs> because that's a lot, Yeah, because a lot of the time, you know, the Vietnam, the whatever rice is coming up from outside, the money goes back to them. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah. they get to they get to have their money back in their countries, but for us, that's you know that you're here, that you're making the stuff here. It goes back into the economy, it supports um, jobs, um, and it supports your business um, to help it grow. Um, and so, where do you think the education needs to start from? Uh, from people like him, make songs about rice. No, okay. that's 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 an unfair statement. What? <laughs> so you think like the celebrities, the musicians, they should all be what they should be talking about it, or they should be no. doing made I in think, Ghana? I think it has to start from our homes. Charity begins at home. At least mm. if you're gonna buy uh, a rice from Thailand, just buy it one cup from Ghana and just mix it, just try it. You know, once a month, just do a, a, a Ghana rice month in your house or something, or a Ghana potato day in your house or something. I mean, do a Ghana food day in your house. We, we've all been westernized and, you know, we like our fettuccines and our pastas and whatever. But if we start doing the whole, you know, having developing the palate for local food, maybe we can get somewhere. So it has to start from home. And we have to stop with the stories of, oh, there are stones in there and it doesn't taste good and it doesn't smell good. And when the perfume is added, please, no perf no one adds perfume to rice. <laughs> I don't know whether it's Chanel or Dior. But I, I was... <laughs> yeah, I don't, another thing too, I wanted to add to that is that uh, pumping it back into the educational system, especially from the lower level. Yeah. Because, um, for instance, if you're in high school in Ghana, and you do wrong, you are asked to go weed, yeah. and 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 this sort of orients you to think that, oh, agriculture is for losers, or if yeah. I have to go and weed, um, you know, I mean, I was in a great class when I was in high school, and I remember often, you know, we were treated as though we were the ones who didn't matter, you know, like yeah. oh, these guys, they are agric students, these guys, they are, but come to think of it, you know, agric is what is feeding the world. You know, if it's rubber, you get it from agriculture. If it, name anything that's not from agriculture. The, every weed is from agriculture. You know, so um, um, I think that we need to start having people to think. And Richard, Richard has uh, started a campaign, which, which I support, um, about glamorizing a Greek to, for people to, to not feel that, oh, because, and he says something, you know, how often do you see that rich farmer who's made money from his farm and bought a Range Rover or bought a house, you know. So so it, it's, it's about showcasing the glam bit of it as well for people to feel, because just like football, some years back, nobody wanted their, their, their son to or daughter to play football. But today, people are paying lots, um, lots of money um, to put their kids in, in, in training schools and stuff like that. So, so, so we need that same approach where people will grow to believe that agriculture is not one of the things you do, but it is something that is of importance. It's something that I can try. So if myself, I'm doing it, I'm doing it also as an example for others to, to, to pick and to learn. It can start from your backyard and then you can grow the love from there. And then from there, you can start with just a plot and then you can add more and add more and add more. And, and, and this is why we're here. So we're not just stopping with, and that's why we we have a we have a program called the uh, Farm Friday, and Farm Friday is just showcasing agriculture, just telling people that you can do it. It will come with the challenges, it will come with the struggle, but you can still do it. Amazing! That's that's fantastic, and I think that's very encouraging. I know you mentioned um, Richard mentioned that you know, even if it's people are doing buy Ghana rice a month or whatever, 
but I think it, it, it shouldn't be a monthly thing. It should be every day we should be buying made in Ghana yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, and get rid of the notion that, you know, even like our wear Ghana, wear Ghana Fridays. It shouldn't just be about Fridays. Yeah. You know, yeah. We, we, I mean, African print is made, it's, it's for us. You know, we should be rocking it every single day, you know, and not just on a Friday, you know. Um, yeah. So I think that we really do need to push the agenda on Made in Ghana and, um, you know, our, our Made in Ghana products that's happening. Yeah. So how did it feel like when the rice was fully packaged and you saw it and you're just like, yes. <laughs> how did you feel? I mean Fulfilling is like it's like finally seeing uh, the fruits of your 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 labor, mm. you know. And I, and I, and, I, and I'll leave Richard to to share his his experience. Yeah, like he called me and said, "Charlie, the rice made for you." <laughs> so Richard, <laughs> Richard, tell um, us about that. I think it was. Um... Richard, can you put your camera up so we can see your face? Because we, we can see your chin. Uh huh. All right, uh, with the feeling, yeah. Um, it was, it was good because we, you know, people complain about packaging in, in Ghana, and yeah. like, oh, Ghana made stuff is not packaged properly, it does not look nice. So, when we harvested and we mailed, we were like, look, let's give them something that would look foreign. Mm. So, we, we had a lot of concepts, and then this the package you got came about and we're like, you know, let's do this. And it seems people love it. Mm. And, but it's good. It's like um, it's like going on the first date, really. So that <laughs> girl in school. I keep mentioning dates and so, dates. And sorry, Trick, Trick didn't go on dates. He was always in church. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get it. I understand. I understand. So it was a, it was a great feeling and you felt like you had to give it that extra branding so that people can put it at a certain level right of course yeah. okay I, yeah um, yeah because i i feel like uh, often what ha what what has become a, a challenge for our products is marketing and hmm. and branding it's like if it has to be from ghana or africa um it, it doesn't have to be um up to that standard it's like we we do everything you know, feeling that oh, where the a f a f f you know, um, a f f you know, mean to me and am I in shed and higher hosa, you know? But the truth of the matter is, we're also selling ourselves to the world. So, um, I mean, if we've accepted things from elsewhere, we might as well, you know, brand ours well and sell it out. So once they pick it up, oh, this is from Ghana, you know. So I go into Sainsbury and seeing a product from Ghana. And, and and you see the packaging and it's lovely. You you go like wow. I mean, yeah. you're not the one that owns it, but you know you you feel good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So what 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 made you use the name? What's the name of the product and what made you choose that name? What does it mean? Well, uh, Richard will answer that. Okay. Uh, well, we actually, <laughs> we're um, brainstorming in my office and. Um, we couldn't come up with anything. Actually, it's two brands. So one is one is actually Wafayao, which is brown rice. It hasn't come out yet. And then there's the Kwaba rice. So we couldn't get a name. And my, my two kids, my two kids came in there and were shouting about. And I was like, wait. So my 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 daughter's called Abba, and then my my son is called Kobe. So I was like, why don't you just add the names and get Kwaba? And then Kwaba was born. Yeah. 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 Sorry, I was rushing to get the rice. Hold on, I just want to show people. <laughs> this is this is out. This is Wafayao, yeah. So this is this is brown rice. No, no, it's uh, no. it's supposed to be brown rice, but what you got was what a you got was a sample. Okay, okay. So you're doing brown rice and um, white and rice. The white rice, yeah. Okay, and did they do they both do the same thing? Like in terms of um, harvest white the rice. same? There's nothing else. Different that you need to do. No, it's just the same. Okay. Just the variety. 
Okay. That's my wife. And so how do you, in terms of pricing, what is the price of the brown and the white rice? Uh, the brown is for rich people, so they pay 30 cities for it. <laughs> Yeah, rich people like brown rice. Yeah, because it's healthy. It's healthy, yeah. yeah. So the the white rice is 30 Ghana City? No, no, no. The, the, white, brown, the, white, the white is 22. Rice is 22. Uh -huh. And then the brown is 30. And the 22 is for the 2.5 kg pack. Okay. And then and then we have 12 CDs for the 1 kg pack. Okay. And then we're going to introduce the 5 kg very soon. Okay. And, and then the brown rice will go for 30 CDs for the 2.5 kg and 15 cities for the 1 kg. Okay, why is the brown rice more expensive when that's the one that's healthy for us? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, it has to do with availability and, you know, like marketing and pricing. Obviously, you consider all these things. Um, for instance, you, you can easily come, come by white rice and and so if you do competitive pricing you you end up losing i mean if you practice that so we're, we're just using the basic uh, marketing or business rules uh, to, to to sell them okay okay so um if people want to order is it out when are you coming out i know these are samples that i have what i mean how can people get hold of the rice Please, if, if, if anyone wants to order, you can go on Kent Farms. Is that, that's the page on Instagram. And okay. then you can place your order and you will have it for you. You can also, I don't know if I can put the numbers. Um, the numbers yes. Are... So can you type it in our private chat? Let me say yes. hi. Okay. okay. And then, yeah. If there's an email address as well. Okay. Let me put it there. Uh, yeah, Chrissy, if we can go through some of the comments that we're having um, whilst he types in the details. Yes, okay, so the number zero two. Okay, I would like to buy, where, where can I get it? People are already requesting. And is there an opportunity for people um, in the diaspora to get it wholesale, to sell it to other... Um, yes, please. ...in the UK? Yes, please. USA? They, okay. Yes, please, they can. And uh, thanks thanks, thanks to you, it's going to, be, it's going to be possible. Yes, it is, absolutely. It has to be, <laughs> without a yeah. doubt. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, Philip says we can definitely grow our own rice. Agro processing is also important in the rice production sector. Thank you, Philip. Yes, we can. Okay, let me see if I have the details. So I just put uh, the numbers on there. Okay, fantastic. And then please send, please add the email address. Yes, and then the email address. Uh, Let me just. Sorry. Sorry. Don't worry. Okay, guys, I have just. Hold on one second. I have just put the rice details um, in the comments box. It's right here as well. I've added the plus 233, um, just in case you are um, outside. And I'm sure these numbers have WhatsApp also, so you yes. can put your order via WhatsApp. Um, let's see here. And the email address that you can use, I will put it up. If you also, whilst I'm doing this, if you have any questions for Trig, for Richard, um, please send your questions right now and I will get him um, and both of them to answer the questions as we um, continue the conversation. Let me add.
So at the moment, they haven't got a 5 kg one, but it's something yes. they're going to be working before Coming the end of the year. Coming Trey, would, would it be before the end of the year? Yes, 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 before the end of the year. For Christmas. For Christmas. For Christmas. Excellent. So this is the email address, guys. Do you think, Trey, do you think that because of who you are, um, you had it, you've had it easier than the rest, like a normal person going through the process? I don't think so. I think it's, it's even been more difficult for me because people struggle to accept new things, you know, especially when they're used to um, who you are. Yeah, it's added up to it, I must say. I mean, maybe trying to get to certain offices um, to get things done, it adds up to it. Uh, maybe marketing bit, it adds up to it. But it also has its downside where if you have fans or you have other people who equally don't like you for your music, obviously they're going to transfer that heat to the product. So, uh, you know, as much as I can, I try even though i try to push it that's why i try to always tag along my brother because you know it's it's, it's our baby and not just mine you know mm -hmm. but i i believe that um with the right collaborations with the right prayers with the right marketing strategies we will be able to overcome some of these challenges but it has it has a lot of good side than bad side because yes obviously oh that's tricks product or oh, that's uh, so so let me go pet, uh, patronize it let me just, some even just want to buy it for the love that they have for you. And sometimes if you want to go to certain places to get things done, you know, even even the security guy, I don't take some, some things for granted. Even the security can say, oh, that's true. Oh, boss, come inside, come inside. That's, mm. that's for me, that adds up to it. You yeah. know, um, so, I mean, I feel like it's a social currency or social capital that I, I don't take for granted at, at, at all. Mm, mm, mm. So where do you see where do you see your brand? Where or where do you want to see it? Where how high? Where do you yeah? Where do you want it to go? <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> we <laughs> Richard, did you want to answer that? Where, where, where do you want to see Kwama brand? Where where is the ultimate shop? <laughs> we want to see it everywhere. Um, yesterday. We visited one of our brothers and you know he was taking us through some of the achievements and i'm talking about hammer okay. and yeah. when i saw how far um a1 has gone i i don't know but for some reason we felt that it was like the same connection that they built for for themselves and then the brand and it, their, their partners him and another guy you know it's like the same stories and, and today they are in 14 shops in the states and counting and um, we're seeing kwaba all over the world we were seeing it competing with the major brands we're seeing it we're seeing times where there'll be so much demand that you know kwaba will invite invite the right investors for major in and a major industry to be set up you know we, we, we're seeing being able to even invite the local investor to to come in and and say you know what this is our ours this is our home and it starts from and, and this is like an indirect appeal as well to even government you know to to step in and say you know what guys this is what you've done by yourselves let's see what we can do with this push so i'm seeing it as as a, a movement that will not just end in ghana but take over the world and just mm. as we tasted uh, Thai rice today, we both we saw a rice brother that we were checking out, and it's from a far away land. It's the same way somebody will pick up our rice from from even Thailand or China or wherever, and say, "Oh, this is good rice from Ghana, and this is my favorite rice." Yes, 
Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, there's a few there's a few comments um, that people have uh, written that we'll go through. Um, somebody said, Harry Poku says, we advertise it to be more healthy than the importation, right? China are sending a plastic and out of date food. Um, he's saying that, you know, how we can go about it in terms of marketing is saying that, look, um, Ghana rice is more healthier than importation rice. And um, do you agree with that? Uh, I, I, I don't think I have the qualification to. <laughs> to answer that question but i think um what no in terms of in terms of not not the last part of you know being plastic but um the fact that we we can can we say it's more healthy or we, we don't know we we actually don't know what happens okay. with our rice is um you know we have the starch residue on it because we don't polish our rice and then we do not spray our rice as well so we we, we count it as natural you know, no additives, nothing. So obviously, yes, so yeah, it's healthier. I mean, why not? I, I, I would, I would choose, I would choose to say it's safer. It's safer, and, yeah. You know where, where it is because from. you know where it's from, and, okay. and we can show you that when you know with chemicals, we don't use chemicals. Okay. You know, it's, it's you know it's homegrown, and even we must say that Kwaba, we go the extra mile to even sort out our rights. So when, if you look at our grains, our grains, we get the long grains for you, and you can I can I can uh, push anyone to go to the market, pick any other local rice brand, and check the back. You find the residue still there. You find some some of the chaff still there in the bag, but we take our time to sieve all that out. So we we, we consider the safety of our consumers. And, and 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 for us that will that will be the point of marketing okay has the ghana exchange um commodity exchange had any um effect on your production or supply chain no 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 have you been in touch with them because apparently they're putting ghana rice on the um stock exchange yeah they have. so you need to get in touch with them yeah i'll put you in, I'll, actually, I'll put you yeah, I think you should. Okay. Nana says, what do you have to say to young guys who are interested in agriculture and agribusiness? Get in there. I'll say way to go, man. Yes. And and you see, we limit agri to the farm. Um, mm. there's, there's, there's processing, there's marketing, there's um, merchandising, and there's mach machinery. There's, um, there's so much to do when it comes to, to agribusiness. So don't limit yourself to just the farm. You know, I, 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 I even discovered that there are middle men who, who even tend to make more money than the farmers, you know, because they, they know that they know the, the, the consumer and then they know the farmer. So they are in between. They are buying your produce. They are pushing it out. There are also people who are into selling farm tools. You know, renting. simple things like farm tools, renting uh, machines, pumps, uh, um, cutlasses, wheelbarrows, um, mm. uh, Wellington boots, graphic designers. graphic designers. Yes. So there's so many, you know, things that you can do when it comes to agribusiness. Even tech. Now, the, the big thing is tech. People yeah. imagine tech and, 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 and agri. You know, and we, we will mention that a very soon we'll launch a product where people can actually eventually invest and farm um, at the same time. Yeah, there's a, there's a few companies. I interviewed one called uh, Grow For Me. So they yeah, do yeah. clean up the water, yeah. they do trees, they do other things. They, uh, you know, a group of people from the UK that set it up. Um, there's yeah. crop, crop estates as well that also do that. But anyway, there's a question from Teresa says, besides supporting our own, what is the wider USB of, um, your your brand, your rice. What's your unique selling point? Your unique selling oh, point. Oh, unique selling point. Yes. It, 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 what makes your rice different from the other rices? The nana rice, the quirku rice. Because, yeah. Yes. Um, All right, so, uh, so I I I want this person to realize that. 
because our rice is uh, pan sorted, you don't get all that residue in the pack. What happens is the ones we have on the market, if you look behind it, you see it has all these residue and dust and everything. Ours is carefully, carefully sorted. So you don't actually have that, which makes it better. And um, it, it, generally, we take our time to do it. We don't mush it and then we dry it properly. As well. So that's what makes ours better. And then with our packaging, the packaging is on point. And we actually, people actually went on a journey with us. So we had the Friday family where people actually saw our grow the rice from, you know, flowering to brush up, and which is something we're doing. You are invited to the farm anyway, maybe if you wanna. Have I'm a gonna be coming to the farm. So yeah, people people can still follow us on Friday farm day, see how the rice is done, and then you know you you know how your you know, rice gets to your plate. Okay, fantastic, Chrissy. Any other questions on the screen? Salom says, Ghana can feed itself. Let's do it. Yep, let's yep. do it. We can do it. Yeah, yeah. We can do it. Okay, George Sam says, is the testing process straightforward or you have to put brown envelope down? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's straightforward yeah. and legitimate. Yes, it's straightforward. <laughs> and very legitimate. And very and legitimate. legitimate. So you didn't I have did. to... Do Kona Kona and get your one fast to... to, no, to no, it's no, straight, it's straight, straightforward. It's very straight. It's straightforward. What you have to do is you have to plan the time well. If you know you have to launch your product at a certain time, give yourself at least two months before the time and submit to the FDA. Get the forms. Uh, make sure you're you you know you, you're guided by their rules. You can read about them. Their website is, is, is up. Um, and then just get the forms. Fill, fill the forms. Be patient. Because once you go through the, the process, you get your stuff and you're good to go. You're good to go. Right. Okay. Uh, okay. Where can we buy this in bulk um, to sell within Ghana? So, Pavana is in Ghana. He wants to buy bulk. Um, how can he do this? Is this by contacting the number, right? Yeah. Yes, please. It's just hit us up on the contact numbers and we'll supply wherever you are. Okay. Okay. So let me put the numbers up again. Let me see if there's any other questions from anybody. And somebody's asking for the social media handles. If you don't mind typing it in, that would be great. Okay. Let me type that. Uh, we need to support our rice growers in Africa, Ghana, etc. Cobra rice. What other countries in Africa cobra rice and distributed to the world? I think there's there's quite a few African countries that do do that. Um, I know that Liberia produces a lot of rice as well. Yeah. Um, a lot of it. Yeah, they do. Okay, so I think the stones and the rice is something that has been repeated from, from years ago. Um, there are many rice farms that don't have stones. Um, okay, Kenneth says local rice farmers should be honest and stop rebranding their produce as imported. So I think a lot of Ghanaians have had to rebrand their rice, uh, from what Kenneth is saying, um, just so that people can buy the rice. Um, most of the rice that comes from Ghana is not polished, so you can, you, yeah, I mean, you can tell the difference. You, you'll know, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Unless people are buying foreign rice and foreign it. Foreign and then, yeah. Okay. And then somebody says, do you need a special soil for the rice growing or do, or how do you know it's the right soil? You need water. I mean, you have to, you can go to your district agri officer and then they can do a soil test for you. So, yeah. so if you know like um, pineapple is in a particular area, if, grow, if it's grown in a particular area, it's very nice and juicy. 
does work have to be done in a particular area, like in the in the northern region or something? You know, it, it, it grows everywhere in, in all valleys. So you have people growing it in, in the Volta region, eastern region, northern region, western region. I mean, everywhere okay. people grow rice. Okay, okay, so it can be grown. Yeah. Okay, let me just put the social media handles up. Kent Farms. Richard, did you live in Kent? No, I, I did not. <laughs> I did, I, I, I'm actually a, a Devon boy. Okay. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> you know I asked you the same question. I know. The, the story, I, I really can't say the story because I might sound a bit pretentious, but we'll leave that for another day. No, I want to know why why Kent Farms, please, if you're not from Kent. <laughs> uh, so, forgive me, but okay, so, you know, my, my father actually bought his first house in, in Kent. So it's kind of like a motivational thing for me to actually, you know, look at that and then do better than him. So that's basically Kent. So most of my companies are actually Kent. I have Kent Investment, I have Kent Farms, we have Kent Sat. Everything's Kent. Kent's, Kent's juice. Kent juice. <laughs> Kent processing. Processing. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right guys we are going to wrap up but i want you to give advice um i'll start with richard um advice to uh, one Ghanaians on how um or what you think they should be doing in terms of patronizing uh, made in ghana and two for anybody that's interested in going into farming uh by made in ghana give the manufacturers the money to improve, buy better machines, better equipment, so that we can give you the best you want. If you want to go to a Greek, don't be shy. Go to your district assembly. They have a Greek offices. Talk to them. You can also talk to us where, with the be wired email address. You can call the number. We are here to help. Just talk to us. Uh, we can we do farm management as well. So let us know what you want to do. Like we always say, you know, grow Ghana, grow Africa. Let's feed the world. Because Africa is meant to feed the world. And I don't know why the world is feeding us. So <laughs> let's just feed the world. Yeah. So, so actually, you've, just, you've touched on the point. In terms of farm management, if somebody's living in the US, USA, in the UK, Europe, and they want to grow farm, they give you the investment, you'll be able to do that for them? Yeah, we can. Uh, we okay. can. When all the uh, necessary paperwork is done, yes, we can. You can. Okay. All right. Fantastic. And then Trig, Triggy, how are you going to be using your platform to really promote Made in Ghana? Um, I think, you know, the likes of, you know, my organization, Guba, myself, we're very actively always trying to promote Ghana. And I don't see enough celebrities promoting Ghana. So how are you going to be able to, you know, add your voice to that narrative? Yeah, uh, that's, that's, thank you for that question. I, I think, you know, I've, I've been following your, all your pages and then yourself, like your page, and then the Guba pages. Um, and I'm happy you mentioned it because I've always wanted to have a collaboration with your entity. Um, I Made in Ghana is something that I've been pushing currently I, I mean, I am the ambassador for folklore, and I've been doing a lot of series on folklore. I in I decry symbols, our our cloth, understanding the cloth and what they stand for, understanding folklore basically. Um, my music, um, people will attest to the fact that I I switched from doing um, in quotes foreign uh, content or sound and I switched to doing traditional music. And that the reason was because I felt like music preservation was taken for granted in Ghana. I felt like we're losing touch of ourselves as a people. So I am gonna use my platform, which I already am, but I will do more. And I think with collaborative stuff, we can all echo the message better. We can amplify it better. Um, I believe in Ghana 100. My, everything I put on a lot of times is made in Ghana. Um, 
even even if it's a hoodie is made in Ghana, mm-hmm. you know, yes, because I, I I I believe that supporting ourselves will get us where we need to be. So yes, and I use this opportunity to also encourage everybody to join in. And and it's funny, I am one of the few people that also believes that we don't need only Fridays to rock our African. Yeah. Oh. We need to do it from Monday to Friday. And then probably find a day to put on other clothes, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, I really support you on that. And uh, I must say a big thank you for everything that you've done, you know, for us believing in Kwaba as a brand, reaching out to us and saying, and also things you're doing in the back for us. Like, you know, I'm really, really blown away by that because, I, I mean, not just anybody will do that, you know. Thank you so much. Thank you for the platform giving us. And um, we're using this to say that we're not going to let um, the whole country down. <laughs> we are going to push. I mean, even though it's a business, we're going to push because as we sell, we sell Ghana as well. And like Richard and Kent believe that we're growing Ghana, we're growing Africa, and we are going to feed the world. Absolutely. And what I find um, really powerful, I mean, I've been doing quite a lot of interviews um, recently, and I am seeing a lot more partnerships, which makes me so excited um, because we really can't do it alone. We need to come together as forces. You know, you're an artist. You may not have, you know, Richard may have more of the knowledge in terms of the, you know, the farming aspect. You come in with your marketing and, you know, your 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 influence um, to to also push the brand. So I think more kind of collaboration is important when it comes to agriculture as well. What do you think? I, 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 I totally agree. I, I agree with you 100. Um, somebody has to do the marketing. Somebody has to be on the farm. Somebody has to negotiate. Somebody has to be an accountant to work. So it must be all hands on. So what you're saying is 100. I'm not Richard if you want to add your voice to that yeah, collaboration. That, that's, that's the problem we have in, in Africa. I think we're, we're stuck in, in, you know, I want to do it by myself. And I'm going to go back to what my father told me once as well. He said, it is better for you to, you know, to be, uh, to have 1% of something that is working than 100% of something that is not working. Yeah. So if six of us are doing something and I have 1% and I'm getting 100 CDs a month, that's fine. I can have the idea stuck in my head and I'm making zero. I mean, what's the point? And we need to learn how to collaborate. And in this whole um, <laughs> attitude of everybody wants to scam everyone who needs to stop. <laughs> it's, it's best to eat together than to eat alone. That's what I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. And guys, look at the packaging. Yes, this yes, is sir. the rice. Yes, I mean, sir. When I saw it, I was like, Charlie, I want to eat this rice. The packaging is on point. Um, so make sure as... Um, Kaiser is just saying here, Africa is meant to feed the world. Like, yes. you know, like we have everything. God built Africa with everything, with gold, with diamonds, with oil, with everything. So there's no way that people or, you know, other countries should be feeding Africa. We should be feeding the world. And um, guys, again, go out there. Let's support our own. Email, hit my brothers up. There's the numbers again. Hit them up. Make sure that you go and buy it. Just buy it. Just try it. Buy it for a friend. Buy it for a loved one, a sister. Um, Christmas is coming. We all know yes. the is coming. We need to make sure that, you know, we're buying some for our mothers, our aunties, all those people that have supported us throughout the year. This is a time that we can also buy Made in Ghana. Buy, you know, do a whole package for them. Buy some rice, buy some oil that's made in Ghana, buy whatever it is, and package it for them and give it to a loved one. So I want to say a big thank you to my brothers for joining me today on the Denver show. I am going to do another show with them, guys, where I actually go on the farm um, and you get to see everything in much more detail. Again, like they said, if you are interested in rice farming or investing as well, you can also get in touch with them. Um, and they will, you know, uh, be able to assist you. But I, what I do also want to say is that don't forget that um, I've actually built a platform, guys, called Odana Connect, which is going to be a platform for people that want to invest in Ghana, people that want partnerships 
in agriculture, if you're looking for jobs, um, it's going to be like a mini LinkedIn where you will be able to get the right partnerships and find the likes of Trigmatic and Richard to be able to give you advice on, you know, rice farming or whatever it is that you want to get into. Um, so guys, make sure that you subscribe to um, Odana Connect. Um, let's support each other. We have to learn to trust each other. Um, listen, it's the, t the time is now. Africa is evolving. Like people are looking at Africa now, you know? And so we have the opportunity to change the narrative. So guys, make sure that you um, subscribe to Adana Connect. I was saying that I've, I've set up a platform trick. Um, okay. It's a platform for um, everybody that wants to invest in Ghana. Um, so for instance, if they wanted to invest in what you guys are doing, you guys will be on a platform. They can have the conversation with you. Um, if they're looking for job opportunities, if they're looking for information from the agri sector, all of that is going to be on the platform. It's going to be like a, a mini LinkedIn, but a yeah, one-stop shop yeah. for people that are looking to invest. Um, we're starting off with Ghana, and then we're going to go to other African um, countries. Um, so it's called Odana Connect. I urge everybody to subscribe. I'm going to get my, my brother Trigmatic and Richard on there as well, so that if you have any questions on um rice farming they will be able to answer that for you but thank you all so much for watching it's been a great conversation very insightful um and guys i will see you same time next week stay blessed thank you so much trig and thank, thank you so, so much, much. Bye. Bye. oh guys thank you so much for watching the show i hope that you've been inspired by my two brothers um, they've come together and they're doing this together. If you have, if you know anybody that may be interested in agriculture as well, just send them a text and say, look, why don't we do this together? You know, write a contract um, and make it happen. The time is now. We need to start trusting each other. But guys, also by Made in Ghana, please, I'm rocking chocolate today. Um, chocolate in terms of the designer. Guys, make sure that we buy Made in Ghana. It starts with us, you know. Also, watch out for Rock Your African Print. Um, we're going to be having a huge event in Ghana, um, a, a Rock Your African Print garden party in December. Um, and I, as I said before, it's really important that we promote, wear Ghana, eat Ghana, celebrate Ghana, everything Ghana. Um, thank you all for watching the show. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you subscribe. I want to say a big thank you to World Remit. You can join over 5.7 million people worldwide who are sending money back home on World Remit. Make sure that you go online and you send money back to a loved one. To my Santi Kotoko friends and family who are watching me, thank you so much for your support. Um, I can't wait till kickoff Premier League starts in Ghana. Again, we need to be watching Ghana Premier League. We need to support our Premier League. I know the, the UK one is very nice and, you know, very sexified and very, it's looking good. But we are also trying to make sure that Ghana Premier League is just as good. So guys, thank you all for um, supporting me. Thank you for joining the Odana Connect. Um, it's really going to be a huge platform. Our own mini LinkedIn that will serve us to also promote our own, join partnerships, any job opportunity, that is the place to be. Sabrina, thank you for watching. Harry, thank you for watching. Um, Mr. Sial, thank you for watching. Thank you all for watching the show tonight. Make sure that you share your pages. I'll see you next week. Same time, same place. God bless you. Bye-bye.